Well, despite being a patient himself now, President Trump once again comparing COVID-19 to the seasonal flu. But Twitter is fact-checking him. You can no longer share that presidential tweet because he violated Twitter's rules against what they say spreading, misleading, and potentially harmful information related to COVID-19. Facebook also removed a similar post from the president, but many people do believe COVID-19 is just like the seasonal flu. Our nine health expert, Dr. Pyle Coley, joins us now to help break that down a little bit. So, Dr. Coley, let's talk about the differences because it's the first week of October. We're going to open the door on flu season, our first one with a pandemic in a long time. How do you know what you're having, what you're dealing with might be the flu versus COVID? So, Tom, really the only similarity between COVID-19 and the flu is that they're both respiratory viruses, so they're spread in the same way, and they have overlapping symptoms. So cough, fever, shortness of breath, muscle aches, and just feeling under the weather. But there's so many important differences about how the virus is spread, and really this graphic summarizes it very well. So essentially the biggest difference is symptomatic versus asymptomatic spread. So the flu, which is largely symptomatic, I mean, it only really spreads when you're having symptoms, as opposed to COVID-19, which, as you know, can have no symptoms at all, can have unusual symptoms, such as loss of taste or smell, or can have very severe life-threatening symptoms. The incubation period of the flu is a lot shorter. So on average, it's only about two days as compared to five days for COVID-19, which is the time from exposure to the time of symptoms. So what that means is that you have a lot less time when you have the flu to be spreading, symptom, to be spreading the virus before you have symptoms. So with the flu, it's only really infectious for one day before you have symptoms, whereas with COVID-19, it can be, you know, three to five days where you're pre-symptomatic and spreading the virus. Now, of course, how long you're contagious also varies. So with the flu, you usually recover in about five to seven days, whereas COVID-19 can take up to 10 days to recover. And then the, the most important difference, in my opinion, is that flu is preventable. We have a vaccine that is effective and safe as opposed to COVID-19, where we're still trying to get that. Will we know soon what it's like? Can you have both is, is what I'm getting at? Can you have COVID-19 and the flu? And if so, that combination, I imagine, wouldn't be any good. You know, you absolutely can have both. And back in March, when the pandemic was really heating up, flu activity was going down. So we had a very low rate of co-infection, is what we call it, where you can have both simultaneous infections at the same time. But now we're in the opposite trajectory, where flu activity is going up. COVID-19 is still really hot. And so that rate of, of co-infection may actually be higher than before. But what we do know, Tom, is so far about 2.3% of the U.S. population has been infected with COVID-19 in just under a year. And every season, the CDC estimates that on average, about 8% of the U.S. population will get the flu. Now, if you start adding up those numbers, 2.3% with COVID, which we know is an underdiagnosis because the likely the infection rate is probably five to 10 times higher, plus 8% having the flu, you're really starting to see trouble there with a large proportion of the population at risk during this twin demic. What about the people at high risk? The difference between people who are high risk for COVID versus people high risk for flu. Is there a difference or a parallel there? Well, you know, there's a lot of overlap. So the high risk groups are greater than 65, those who are immunocompromised and pregnant women. But a key difference between this is those children. So in healthy children, the risk of complications from COVID-19 is a lot lower than it is from the flu. In fact, Children are considered one of the high risk groups when it comes to the flu, children under the age of five. Now, when you have infants under the age of one, those are considered high risk, regardless of whether it's flu or COVID-19. But, you know, there's just so many unanswered questions out there and so much information that we're still learning. Almost on a daily basis, we start to identify more and more high risk groups, such as those that are obese, for example. Well, I would say get a flu shot, but it sounds better coming from you. And you, you want people to go, it's time, right? Go get a flu shot. I got mine on September 30th. Now is the perfect time. It is the absolute right window. You definitely want to get it before the end of this month if you want to be protected against this preventable illness. Good advice as always from Dr. Paul Coley. Thanks.